Hello, welcome back to the Mobile Motorbike Mechanic Channel. I'm Steve. Today we're heading off to um, Wrighton on Dunsmore, just outside Coventry. Uh, we've got a Bandit 600 set of carbs to pull apart, clean and rebuild. So we'll see you when we get there. Okay, so here we are with the Bandit 600. So the story with this is customers have the carbs off for a while, um, need some sorting out basically. So we've got a few bits of rags stuck in the uh, stuck in the inlets here, the air boxes apart and the battery's missing. So what we'll do, we've got the carbs over in the back of the van. We'll pull them all down, clean them all through, get them all back together again, get them back on the bike. Okay, so here are the carbs. Like I say, they've already been removed from the bike before we got here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull them all down, clean them all through, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see how bad they are. But let's get into taking these apart now. Okay, let's get into this. Let's see what we've got. No, no, no. <laughs> Already failed. Going to have to open up. Going to have to get a set of them. And... I can't remember if it's a 7mm or an 8mm spanner. We need to get those as well. Right, handy dandy little divider. So we can put each, all the stuff out of each carburetor into a divider there. So when we pull them all down, we're not getting bits mixed up. On some bikes, the jets are different between the in two, inside two carbs and the outside two carbs. So it's always good to have a, a system so you can be able to everything out. But what we're going to do is we're just going to start pulling all the hoses off. And then it just makes life a little bit more easy for us. We're a little bit more manageable. Hey, come on. There we go. And then there's that vacuum line there. Right. I'm going to get this carb heating harness off as well there we go right we'll just pop all that on run down there right okay so now we can start getting off the four screws for the float bowl need a really good fitting screwdriver <clears throat> and oh if the carbs have never been apart before, these screws can be very tight. So just be warned. There we go. Yeah, so we're going to need a, a float bowl seal. Got a pack of those in the van. Now this float is held in with this pin, so we just need to pull that pin out. There it is. A pair of pliers on that just to grab the end of it. Oop, hang on, it's gone back in again. Nice and gentle, you don't want to be grabbing at things. There he is. Pull him out. Now when you lift this up, you'll see there's the float underneath. So just make sure you don't lose him. Okay. So that's so that we've got the main jet there. We've got the emulsion tube underneath it and we've got the pilot jet. So we'll get those out next. Decent fitting screwdriver. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. <clears throat> oh, there we go. That's got it. And then we change to a different fitting screwdriver for the main jet. 
Like I say, you need decent fitting screwdrivers. So that's your main jet. Pop him in there. I haven't done the pilot jet, but he's down that hole, so he can't come out. And then we need eight mil spanner to undo the emulsion tube. And there's the emulsion tube. Again, some of these emulsion tubes will have different amounts of holes, depending on which carb they're in. So make sure you keep them in the correct alignment. And then that jet in there comes out. There we go. So now all that's left on that carb is the top. So we turn it over, protect the bottom, because now you've got all this open. Oh, hello, what's that? It's just fallen out. Ah, extra little bit of brass there that's just fallen out. That's underneath the emulsion tube. And that's got two different ends on it. You see there's one there. So that one is bigger than that end, okay? So that went in with the big end first. Right, extra bit of brass, that's why you always cover your hand as well, in case anything falls out. So let's get this lid off and see what's under it. So I think these carbs have been taken apart once from the feeling of them. They're not overly tight. And also you get extra little bits and pieces of hardware on some carbs. So you've got to remember where all that's got to go as well. <laughs> These lids, warn you now, underneath this lid is a very large spring. Beware, you notice I'm not letting go of that lid at all. Even though I'm taking the screws out, I'm still pushing down on it because here we go, there's your spring, spring, and then your diaphragm. Now when you remove the diaphragm, be careful, because sometimes these can get stuck in here. So you just want to tease it out. You don't want to go yanking it out and rip the diaphragm. So just tease it out, make sure it comes out, and then you can lift the diaphragm and the needle all in one go. Now. Sometimes, if you turn this upside down, all of the gubbins that's in there will fall out. So if you're throwing it into a pot like I'm doing, whoa, there you go. If you throw it into a pot like I'm doing, just make sure you're not losing any parts. So that's the top of the carb. That's it. That's one carb stripped. And as you can see, there's not a lot to it. We might want to get this... Uh, this float valve out, uh, float valve seat, sorry, we might want to get that out and give it a clean. We'll blow through all of the other apertures on the carburetor with carb cleaner and compressed air. May as well get the, no, we don't need that off. Yeah, so we'll blow through all of them with compressed air and cleaner, get all that nice and clean. So that's one done, I'll do the other three. Right folks, so, that's all four of those carburetors stripped down as much as we're going to clean them. Well, stripped down as much as we're going to strip them down. Now we need to clean them. So we've got all the tops off. We've got all the uh, all the jets out. Everything's done. So we've got everything laid out nicely in our little tray here. So we know where everything goes. And we know what goes into what carb. So next we're going to do is we're just going to soak all of this lot with our carb cleaner. Just blow through all of the jets, all the orifices, all the holes. Um, we'll get the airline round and we'll get that all uh, all blown through and dried out and everything. So we'll crack on with that now. Right, that's all the carb bodies blown through. 
Um, obviously this process isn't as good as um, ultrasonic tank cleaning, but uh, according to the customer, these carbs were tanked not very long ago. They don't particularly look that clean, to be honest, but if they were tanked, okay, not a problem. I haven't seen anything untoward on these. They all seem pretty clean, so I'm pretty happy with that. Like I say, we've just blown through all of our orifices, made sure we're all good. So, next we'll do the jets. So, we've got an emulsion tube, we've got a pilot jet, and we've got the main jet which sits on top of the emulsion tube there. And then there's a little brass insert that sits in the carb, which goes underneath that. So we've got those three together, bum bum bum. Woo! Yeah. So that's how that stacks up. And then your pilot jet is off to one side. So what we need to do is we need to hold these up to the light and see if we can see through them. So normally main jet, you can see straight through it. Yep, we can see through that one. That's not too bad. Well, because we'll still clean it, but we can see through it. The little brass insert. Yep, we can see through that. The emulsion tube. Yep, we can see through that. But you're also going to look through these holes on the side. If you hold it up to the light, you should be able to see. Obviously, there should be four on the other side. We've got two there, so there should be two on the other side. If you hold it up to the light, you should be able to see through it. See through it, see through it. We'll clean them anyway, but yeah. So we've got a pilot jet here, which we cannot see through at all. And then we've got two holes there, which we should be able to see through. And sometimes, yeah, there's two holes there as well. So we've got two, four holes. So we need to clean that one. To do that, we've got these little they call them files, and I suppose you could remove material with them if you're harsh enough. But all we're going to do is we're going to go down to a suitable size. We'll start with the emulsion tube, and we're just going to whoop, we're just going to pop that through and just give it a little clean. We don't want to see any material coming off. We don't want to see any brass coming off, but we just want to see any muck coming out. That's number two, that's three, and then four. And then we're going to do these two on the side here. One, and two. Right. Now what we can do, take a bit of cleaner, put your finger over the end, and blow through. Don't get it in your eyes. Do not get it in your eyes. But you can see there's a good spray pattern there. It's blowing out of all four on that side, all four on that side. You turn it around 90 degrees. You can see it's blowing out of those two and out of those two. So, that's one emulsion tube clean. Hold it up to the light, double check it. Make sure we haven't dislodged any rubbish. Right. I'm happy with that. That's clean. That goes back in the pot. Now we do. Oh, oh we'll do the main jet next. So the main jet is quite a quite a sizable hole. So we're going to select a bigger cleaning thing there. No, it's too big. Right, so you don't want to be forcing these in. You want to get the right size. It just wants to slip on. There you go. Look, see that one's the right size. That one up. Next one up. Too big. So we don't want to be removing any material. We don't want to be changing the jet. We just want to be cleaning any rubbish that's in there off. And then quick little spray out with the can again. There we go quick dry and then another look through just to make sure we haven't dislodged anything that's done so that main jet can go into the emulsion tube we know that's done so pilot jet really really tiny holes in these pilot jets so small in fact 
I don't have a uh, a drill file small enough for it. So what I use is a brass brush. And this brass brush, you see we've got little wisps sticking out. And all we're going to do is just going to put one of those and you can see it's come out the other end. Clean the rubbish off, give it a little spin around, a little clean through. We'll hold it up to the light. Yep, we can see light through that. You probably ain't going to see that on the camera, but you can actually see light through that. So once again, a bit of cleaner through it. Yeah, that's spraying through there nicely. Yeah. If you've got any cuts on your hands, wear like gloves, because this stuff, sorry, this stuff hurts. Now, if you hold that to the light, yeah, that's blocked again. Yeah, that's blocked again. So we've dislodged some dirt in there. So we'll give it another clean. Wipe the end of that little bristle. Because we don't want to drag the dirt back in again when we take the jet off. And that's clean now. We can see through that. So, we can pop that back into our carburetor. Have our screwdriver. And pop them down until he seats. Give him a little... That's that one. Where was our main jet? Main jet and emulsion tube. Screw them in. It's normally either a 7mm or an 8mm spanner on those ones. Little nip and a decent fitting screwdriver. And you would just want to nip that. But... And there we go. That carb is done. We'll move on. We'll do all the jets on these carbs. And then we can put the tops back on again. Right. I messed up on that one because there was a little brass insert piece. See, this is why we have everything laid out. There's this little brass insert piece that needs to go underneath that emulsion tube. So we're not infallible. So large end in first, smaller end up towards you. Pop it in and then the emulsion tube goes in. And you can see it poking through the carburetor body there so we messed up there right so there we go that's all the jets back into their respective holes and with all the brass pieces seated into the car the throttle bodies so or carburetor bodies i should say right so we're going to put the floats in uh, basically the float consists of three parts you've got the pin which is the hinge and then you've got the valve, float valve. This is the float valve seat here on the carb. But you've got the float valve itself, which is this little rubber thing. So you're checking to make sure that that cone looks like a nice cone. It's not all sort of crinkled up in the middle or off to one side or anything. And then it's got this little hanging bracket that you just slip onto the float valve. Oh, come on. And do this there we go so we're hanging the float valve and then we want to put it into the body of the carb so as it goes in you see that valve needs to go into that seat just like that and once that's in we pop the pin in just line it all up and the pin should slide in shouldn't be forcing it shouldn't be hitting it with hammers and just check the action of the float valve make sure that's floating up and down there we go that's one in we'll do the other three right that's all four of those mounted now so got nice and uh nice and free movement so that's good so we'll get the bases on and get everything buttoned up we just need to Lock the float bowls on. Now you'll notice on the float bowls, 
two point that way and two point that way for these bases. So we put them back on the same way. So that's good. And then we can put the screws back in again and get it all back together. And we don't do any individual screw up until all four are actually in the threads as it were. So you notice we've We've got that one in the threads, but we're not doing it up. We've got that one started, but we're not doing it up. Okay, so all the bases are done. So now we can do the do the tops. Uh, one trick is you might be tempted to turn the carbs around and then suddenly you're putting the wrong bits on the wrong ends. So just make sure you know which carbs number one, which carbs number four. All right. Um, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> let's start putting in the lids. So just so that you guys can see this, this is actually this carburetor. But what I'm going to do, you might notice the slide doesn't fit in the cab, and that's because it is actually designed only to fit one way around. Okay. Now the other problem you're going to have, that slide's not dropping down, and it's because that needle can, you see, it can go off to the one side or the other of that brass insert. It has to fit in the middle. And when it fits in the middle, it just simply drops down. So just a little gentle tap, seat the seal, some carburetors they might have um, an extra piece of um, diaphragm that sticks out that needs to be seated or they might have an o-ring on one of these so be careful but once that's seated spring back on lid back on and again the lids you see there's a it's like a recess on the lid so the lid should only fit one way around and we'll see it's going to fit it's going to fit that way around does it fit the next way around yes it does but it's indexed so it can't move so i'll pop a couple of screws in just to hold it in place come on bum, bum, bum. and the reason why I know this carburetor was this hole is because we had the choke cable holder on it. So for this, this is the choke actuator here. So I knew that that was on that carburetor. In fact, yeah, there you go. So that's the choke actuator there. Do, 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 do. And there we go one lid on i'll get the other three done that's everything done so we've got a tray full of nothingness which is good so we haven't left anything behind and we've got a full set of carbs so we're just going to check the float uh, check the slides make sure they're working and they are so now what we can do is we can pop back on our tubes and our um, our carb heating um, electrics and then we can get these over to the bike and get them fitted Right, so this number four inlet manifold is damaged. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get in here and remove it for the chap. He's got a uh, he's got a replacement one for us. So it's just a question of getting these two Allen bolts undone, and then we can whip that one off and get the new one on. These are sometimes sort of almost glued on to the actual cylinder head, so they might take a bit. Yeah, so that's you can see the damage 
where somebody's previously tried to fit a set of carbs and not got them seated correctly. So that would have been sucking air in like nobody's business. So I'm going to chuck that one away, get a new one, put it on. Right, we're just going to clean this face off because you notice there's a bit of corrosion on here. So we're just going to clean that off with a scotch pad here. Because we want a decent seal. So. There we go, that's nice and smooth and flat, which is what we want. And the reason we want it smooth and flat, because on the new part, on the back of the new part, you've got this O-ring seal, and that actually seals to the block. So, let's get that on. Now, is it that way around, or is it that way around? Uh, thinking it's that way around. Yep, it's that way around. <laughs> and there we go. One nice new inlet rubber. And we can reuse the um, the clip, although if you look at the clip, it's not exactly very round. So I'll just grab a pair of pliers and just give that a little tweak to help it out. Right, so we're about to fit these uh, fit the carbs now. So we've got the new inlet manifold on there. Um, what we need to do is identify which is your pull cable on your throttle. So we've done that and we've put a little P on it so I know which one's pull and then on your carbs your carbs are going to open that way so that's going to be your P and that's going to be your return that's going to be a pull that's going to be your return so I'm just going to mark that up as well and then when the I when I put them back together again wrong I can blame myself so anyway what we need to do is we need to get that cable in down there and onto the carbs and then we need to get that cable onto that and through that clip um, and then there's also the choke cable as well that needs to go onto the choke choke actuator so uh i'm going to get some cloth to cover this over so we don't scratch the scratch the uh the frame and we'll get into that right so getting these um Getting these cables in here can be a bit of a bugger because you see you've got to go right down into the middle of there onto that and every time you're trying to turn the cable but of course the inner isn't moving it's on the outer so you've got to get it into there yeah this is going to be a, be a pain in the ass but we'll get there this is what test, tests your patience this does Bum, bum, bum. Normally a little pick or a small flat bladed screwdriver would help you in there just to get it into that hole. I'm going to go get one in a second. I'm about to lose my rag with it. Yep, I'm going to go get a small screwdriver. So. Ooh. So this is a real fiddle, this one. Excuse if you can't hear me properly, because I've got a screwdriver in there. And a ventriloquist, I am not. There we go. So that's, that's the pull cable in. And now we need to do the return cable. Return cable, much easier. See, you just... Oh, hello. It is much easier. Yeah. In there, dump them on. 
that's the return cable done. Um, I'm just loosely tighten those up for the minute because I haven't brought a 10 mil spanner with me. Alright, and now we can feed them down and into, we'll, we'll attach that cable in a minute. We're going to feed them down and in. There we go. Just a question of feeding them in and down and in and down and in and down. And then we'll line up with the inlets. Right. That's looking about right. So looks a mess, but don't worry, we'll we'll gradually put all of these uh tubes and bits and pieces where we need them first things we've got to do is we've got to get these carburetors seated <clears throat> so good trick is get one side in get it locked off on the clip and once it's locked off on the clip You can go around the other side and push the other side in. So that's locked off on that clip. Run around. And if luck is with us, we'll be able to push these in. <clears throat> Sometimes it goes, other times they can be a right pain. <laughs> Be careful because I have known people to pull bikes over on themselves and pull them off the stands because you are putting a lot of force into these. <clears throat> a little longer than a few minutes later. Oh, right, that was a bit of a struggle, but we've got the carbs on. So what we need to do now is go under here and get onto that screw there. Now, you, as you see, as you push the screw, it goes away from you. So if you, you need three hands there, but basically it's for filming purposes. I've got a balancer about there. But if you bring your hand in from the top, you can put a finger on the clamp. And you see I'm moving the clamp with my finger there, which means I can get my screwdriver on it and do it up. And there we go. And once it's done to a certain point, it ain't going to turn around anymore. So, actually, are those carbs fully seated? I'm just going to check because notice in this one doesn't look like it's ah you see that right now we're fully seated didn't think they were so now we can do the clamps up there we go and push that one down into place All right, I'll go around the other side, do the other two, and then we'll get the, the struggle of the air box. <laughs> right, so before we pop the air box on, we've just um, tightened up the throttle cables. So we've got a good throttle and return action. So that's all great. Somebody did comment on one of the other videos that we didn't show how to get the throttle returning properly on one of these twin cable setups. Um, Normally, it's all to do with the return cable. If you've got the return cable too tight, the 
the throttle ca the throttle won't return normally so just keep an eye on that so thanks for pointing out in the comments on the last video but there you go hopefully that helps so like i say we've got the pull cable we've got the return cable all done so that's all nice we're just going to get this um get this choke fitted up so all that we do is just root it through and that's just going to clip into its little hole here should be pretty straightforward there we go and then it just pops into its little bracket uh, how do we pop into your little bracket there it goes just in there and that's it and then we come up to the bar if we operate the choke that's operating properly so that's all the cables back on obviously that's the fuel line we've got our vacuum line for the fuel tap there so now we can get the air box on and get these overflow lines out the way okay we've got the air box seated we just need to do the clips up um, we did notice we put this fuel hose on incorrectly so we had to come this side of the uh this side of, the, of this rail so we just changed that over but everything else looks about right so we'll uh yeah we just need to do these four clips up and then that's the air box back on again just got a box of bits so i'm just trying to work out what goes where these are obviously tank rubbers and tank retaining bolts we've got our little test tank attached just checking for leaks whilst we're messing around putting the last of it together and it appears that we do not have any leaks which is brilliant so we'll get the rest of this all back together and then we can get on and fire the bike up and hopefully um, hear it run. Well, unfortunately my bike's failed. When it started, Going to increase the tick over a little bit with the balance of carburetors. Right, have a look at the carbs. So I'm all over the place. So we'll get those balanced up now. There we go. There we go. See what it's like on the restart. Ok, 
okay we've just pulled these carbs if you come down there and have a look at the inlets they're absolutely swimming in fuel yeah, it's just absolutely swimming in fuel so that's what our problem is it's over fueling so this bike is being over fueled for running way too rich and it, it's got too much fuel for the air and that's the reason why it won't run right so that's the carbs out we're gonna have to rebuild those again unfortunately happen sometimes right this is steve cam camera lady's not here today uh we're back on the back on the the bandit so what we've found we've um ultrasonic cleaned the, the uh the carbs so the carbs are back on carbs are running it's absolutely spot on bang on but what we've found is the oil in it is absolutely like water so i don't know if you can see that it's just completely fuel contaminated so um like i said we've we fixed the carbs uh bike runs absolutely spot on so we'll just fire that up um hang on a second ah battery Bikes running absolutely spot on. Right, so we've done the carbs. Um, so the problem was the carbs, so tanked them. Uh, but yeah, we're just doing all the filter as well now because that oil, no good. So uh, yeah, we'll call this one done. <laughs> 